very symbolic in the way that it produces symptoms and I feel that symptoms are essentially like a calling to bring our attention to something in our life. We attract what we are. As your field changes and opens up into new possibilities, you attract new possibilities. So the early Christian writers definitely played up this idea that no, it's not just inner spiritual healing, but it's also external, physical. It has been well established that spirituality and religiosity are positively correlated to physical well-being. I wanted to investigate this connection in order to gain a deeper understanding of the relationship between spirituality and physical health. In the spring of 2011, I was interested in exploring the world of alternative therapies, more specifically biofield therapies, which claim to facilitate healing through the human energy field. The concept of a vital, transferable life energy is an idea that has permeated most religious traditions. To Christians, the most notable example of this is seen through Jesus' role as a healer. Well, I come down and actually heal this person. Uh, I, I think that's the misconstruing of what healing and spirituality means. If you allow for the possibility that, okay, God is going to come down and, and heal person A, then then the very natural question which everybody asks uh, is why didn't they, why didn't he heal person B? So I was raised uh, a Roman Catholic. Um, both of my parents are Roman Catholic, so you know, I was baptized in the church, uh, normally like most normal Catholics would be. And it wasn't really until I got into to college, I went to Catholic University, I went to a Jesuit University. And it wasn't until I started interacting with a lot of my Catholic friends, uh, with a lot of priests, with a lot of Catholic uh, adults, that I really started to get back into uh, the faith. Currently, I would say that I, you know, I'm a practicing Roman Catholic, and uh, I'm really happy with, with what I believe. I go to church regularly, and I try and pray regularly, and uh, it's very important. There are a number of places in the Bible where is it, it is explicitly stated that Jesus laid hands on so-and-so's eyes and his sight was restored, um, healing the lepers. Um, so the early Christian writers definitely played up this idea that no, it's not just inner spiritual healing, but it's also external, physical healing. I think the function of spirituality really is to give us like a broader perspective on our own suffering, be it um, physical or mental. What spirituality does is that it, it, um, it's like meditation, you know, it gives us a frame of mind that maybe makes us better equipped to fight off diseases. Spiritual practice and biofield therapy often seem to go hand in hand. Where one goes, the other follows. I followed my question to Youngstown, Ohio, where certified hypnotist and energetic counselor Meredith Marie Miller was willing to offer her perspective. You know, as things go into the body, they have to come back out. And so the healing crisis is when everything is coming out to the surface and it feels like you're actually getting worse, but you're not, it's just coming out. I would out. say a closed mind would be the first thing that would hinder the healing process. My work is predominantly vibrational work, and um, I've learned it in various places, California, New York, Peru, and Mexico. And um, essentially what I'm doing is working with the vibrational layers of the client. So this is sort of the energetic fields that are around them that shape both their body, both their um, mental layers and their emotional layers as well. I don't practice just one modality of healing work. I tend to just sort of pick out in the moment with the client what's most important for them or what I feel they most need. As a practitioner, it's important to be as centered, as grounded, as clear as possible because you can only help 
the client as much as you are if you come to the table with that client and you're thinking about your argument with your boyfriend or your difficulties at home or you're not making enough income if you can't put that aside and be completely present for the client your therapy will not be effective um, you know also the paradigm in which I work is based on the empowerment of the individual um, often in the Western world we come from this victim-based consciousness in which we see a doctor or a therapist sort of as a god figure and we sort of surrender ourselves to them and want them to fix us or heal us but essentially every person has that responsibility themselves. Essentially what the healing journey is all about is coming in contact with your deeper self, you know, your true nature and your connection to everything else. I see it sort of as a continuum that maybe what's going on at the physical level often reflects what's going on at the emotional level or the mental level. And often we can catch clues in various places such as, you know, if your elbow is hurting, you know, um, we can look at that symbolically and say maybe there's an issue of flexibility in your life, you know, something you're being stubborn about. Essentially, I think we are whole beings and that to look at just the physical well-being or to look at just the spiritual well-being or the emotional well-being is sort of like to miss the big picture. And often by the time it exhibits at the physical level, we've already ignored it for so long. The process of homeostasis is one of the most powerful forces in the universe, and that is sort of the seeking of balance. And so simply by nudging a person in a different direction, you know, today maybe their boat steered one degree different, and it doesn't look like a lot, but down the road, they're moving in a very different path than they were had they stayed over here. The healing journey is as unique as every individual, so there is no one path. If the idea of a human energy body seems hard to be convinced of, consider this. The human body most certainly has an electrical field, and further, we are able to transmit energy from one body to the next. Do you remember that experiment in high school where everyone held hands and one person received a mild electric shock? The electrical current traveled through each and every person, finally coming full circle. I mean, everything has an energy field. And it's not um, magic. It's training in terms of my experience that one can be trained to sense, to feel, and to move and manipulate energy for health purposes. So what I actually do with the client is a combination of t actual techniques that I was taught, where to put hands on the body, how to hold my own energy field, how to work with intention, how to understand guidance that's coming through you or through the client. It's not something that I create or that the client creates. It's more like a physical principle mm. of the universe or of the earth. It's like <clears throat> one of the principles, a physical principle, for instance, would be like gravity. You know, if I let this thing go, it's going to fall. It's one of the physical principles of where we are. Um, if you or I were to go and have a PET scan done, or an MRI, what they're measuring, what they're looking at, what they see up on the screen, those, those colored images, that's a resonance of the energetic field around the body mm -hmm. and around different organs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a physical Principle, and we use it for diagnostic purposes, but not so much for therapeutic purposes. Mm. Because you can't, you know, as I'm putting my hands on your body or around your body, so, you know, you can't see it. Just from a physical health standpoint, having a spiritual practice seems to initiate the relaxation response, which Herbert Benson talked about early on. And he was trying to elicit this relaxation response through meditation, through biofeedback, where people would go into meditation, he'd hook them up to machines, and he would find out that, whoa, their blood pressure's coming down, their heart rate is lowering, their respirations are, are coming down. Now they're, you know, and they're reporting these feelings of peace and well-being and 
you know, happiness in their mind. Their mood is elevated. So isn't that interesting? And then he found over time that these people are healthier. That when they go into meditation and they have this physiological response, they can maintain their health at a greater degree for a long period of time. That response is something that invariably happens during an energetic healing session. And we all have beliefs. All of those beliefs have an impact. Uh, they stick in the field and in our consciousness. And every time we meet a situation that triggers that belief, that belief comes forward. Every time I have a pain in my legs, I say, oh, well, that's my bad right now. That's always going to hurt. Where does the belief reside? Well, it resides in physical tissue. It resides on the emotional level because there's a lot of feeling <laughs> attached to all those beliefs. Then there's the psychological opinion. You know, sure, we, you know, this is what I think about it. And then there's the spiritual realm that also holds that uh, conglomeration. So energy work works on all of those levels. <clears throat> so a lot of times I might say, what if that wasn't your bad luck? What if you met a man who was extremely kind to you? You know, what if? So you open the possibility. Another principle of spiritual work or energetic work is that we attract what we are. That as your field changes and opens up into new possibilities, you attract new possibilities. Energy work tends to really boost uh, talk therapy mm -hmm. because it actually physically moves the issue through the system. Talk therapy can often cycle back, and you know you got it, and then you talk about it. Oh, I'm going to talk about it again. I'm going to talk about it again. Energy work can kind of break that cycle by physically moving the energy through the field. So it really is a combination of the energy work in the system with someone doing their personal process. If you want to really move a belief. Energy work then is therapy tailored to both the physical and mental wellness through this human energy field. If physical healing positively affects one's mental state and spiritual wellness positively affects the physical state, then energy therapy seems to facilitate holistic well-being. Even from a traditional religious perspective, commitment to spiritual practice is perceived as improving both mental and physical health. I think it has made me um, a better person um, in, in the sense of being a more well-balanced person compared to what I was before I had uh, gotten deeply into Catholicism. Uh, I think that my quality of life would be significantly poorer if I did not have it and uh, I have no doubt that that would contribute to an erosion of my own mental and own physical health. Because everybody's energy work is very, very individual. In life we all have suffering, we all have these wounds and rather than try to avoid them or to resist them, to have the courage to look deeper into those wounds because it's through those wounds that we get in touch with who we really are. We get in touch with the divine itself 